Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Ponzi, my wife and I were having a discussion, rather heated discussion, in the car earlier, talking about uh, a video that we did yesterday. Uh, specifically, do images look better on the Mac or the PC? And I was saying, well, really, it kind of depends on the monitor and the screen. I was actually a little, um, a little off in saying that because, um, as someone in the chat room sent me an email after hearing that, suggesting, and I think it was Matthew Baker saying that the way OS X opens a photo, it actually adheres to the color profile uh, for that specific photo in rendering it on the screen, whereas on the PC, it just renders all the photos the same. So in, in some cases, that it may be accurate to say that OS X renders photos in their original color. Of course, it depends on the calibration of your screen, and I will give OS X this as well. Color calibration on a Mac is far easier than it is on Windows, like by a factor of 10. Uh, amazingly better on uh, on a Mac and I'm not saying that because I'm a Mac guy or I'm an Apple fan by any stretch of the imagination uh, but we did have a question come into the chat room earlier from Gino and he asks I have never used a Mac and heard there's a learning curve if you've used Windows your whole life uh, but I don't want to buy a new computer with Vista and I can't see opening uh, or spending sorry it was a little typo there 2000 plus on a PC with a now old operating system. That's a good point. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, the, the more than anything, hopefully, Gino, you live in a, a near or in a major metropolitan area, um, and I would encourage you to walk into an Apple store and try some things out. Or, you know, maybe you've got a friend who has a Mac and actually playing with it for a while, I think you're going to discover it's not as different as you may have been led to think. Uh, now, people have noticed in the past couple of days, uh, well, specifically because I picked it up and unboxed it last night, this is a one of the new Macintoshes. It's a 15-inch LED backlit uh, Mac, and it, well, that's way too bright. Well, it is very bright, but I'm going to try to uh, turn down the brightness just so you can see a little bit of it, at least on the live video stream. And you know, the, the advantages of having a Mac over having a, just a regular old PC, and we've talked about those terms before in, in the past too, saying that, you know, really a PC is equivalent to just saying it's a Windows machine. Um, you know, the big differences between uh, running Windows and running on a Mac are largely in the way menuing systems work. In fact, Microsoft is trying to get away from menuing systems altogether. We've talked about the Office ribbon, and in some cases inside of Windows Vista, inside the Explorer, you have icons in the toolbar, but there are no actual classic menus. They're trying to get you out of the mindset of having to use uh, menus again. Some people miss the menus, and I wouldn't expect them to come back from Microsoft anytime soon, but uh, on the Mac, the menu is always at the top, and I've got to admit, I'm not incredibly thrilled with that experience. I never have been. That's one of the things that's kind of always put me off about the Mac, but it's it's gotten a little easier to use the more frequently I uh, happen to access or use the Mac. Uh, so when I open this window here, which is the Safari web browser, uh, or if I open, let's say, Firefox, um, you know, if you use Firefox on the PC, you're probably used to everything that uh, it does already, and moving from Firefox from the PC to the Mac, there are going to be some small differences, but by and large, it's the same program, for the most part. There may be some plug-in incompatibilities on both sides, but certainly it's a, f a familiar enough program. Uh, of course, Apple's got different versions of software for the various utilities. It's got a different kind of address book, a different kind of chat applications. There are different programs uh, that are available for OS X compared to uh, the Mac. Uh, wait, sorry. OS X compared to Windows. Uh, but in many, in a, many, many cases, the apps inside of OS X are designed far better than they are in Windows. For instance, iCal is the program for OS X that is a calendar. And it's far easier to use calendar inside of OS X on the Apple than it is to use the, the the Windows calendar in Windows Vista is just laughable. I mean, it's just, it's pathetic. <laughs> really, I mean, if they pay, if they charge people for the Windows calendar, it would be a crime of epic proportions. It's that bad. Uh, so, 
the programs aren't different in terms of base function is just the nuances that you may have to get used to so the menu may not be in the actual program itself but it will actually always be there right along the top of the screen and you can you can flip between windows with very much a similar instead of alt tab it would be the uh, I guess the open apple tab uh, and you can flip between windows of course there's also uh, different keyboard shortcuts in OS 10 that uh, work in in some cases better than uh, the keyboard shortcuts do in Windows uh, it's something called expose so if I've got a lot of windows open at one time I can uh, run a, a keyboard shortcut and it'll show me all the windows it'll cascade them out so I can see them all in one view uh, and I've seen Windows freeware and shareware that kinda does the same thing but really doesn't do a very good job at it or at least not half as elegant as the way it happens inside of OS 10 uh, so you know there may be a learning curve but you know once you get past that initial hump if you can move past the I don't like it because it's not Windows I don't like it I'm not used to it if you can move past that I think you'll be warmer to the idea of well it's, this is actually very very workable it's it's nice not perfect not you know just uh, uh, ungodly amazing in my mind uh, but certainly a good enough alternative and moreover if you're still wanting to run Windows applications, you can use programs uh, like VMware Fusion uh, or Parallels. We've talked about both of those uh, in in the in the in the past. And moreover, if you're spending two thousand dollars, you might as well buy. Uh, if, if if you want and if you're curious about the Mac, you can buy a Mac at that price because you can have the best of both worlds. And the Mac is the only one, or the a Apple machines are really the only ones that can offer that. Um, you know. One of my best friends up here in Seattle. He's I consider him one of my best friends because I, I like him and he likes me. Uh, we don't fight that often. Uh, Brandon Paddock uh, ended up buying a MacBook and he doesn't run OS 10 on it. He only runs Vista and he says it's the best PC he's ever owned. Huh? Eh? Uh, yeah, the Mac is just so much fun. In fact. Um, the, there's certain things that are built in. You say, well, where's the right click key? The cool thing about setting up a right click with a trackpad on a, on a Mac is you use two fingers instead of just one, and that pretend, that's like your right click. And it is so convenient. You have no idea. I never thought I'd get used to it, but it's just like now when I try to use a trackpad on any other laptop, it's annoying because I can't two finger to right click it's that convenient uh, moreover this is a really cool feature I like using too I can zoom in by uh, and hopefully you can see that I'm zooming in directly on well the calendar at this point uh, by holding onto the control key and scrolling with two fingers up and so I can I can zoom in on the screen without installing any extra software it's just inherently part of OS 10 it's just it's nice it's just there uh, so you know once you get past the the fear of trying something new um, and you've got the bridge of the safety net of being able to still have Windows applications at, at your beck and call uh, I, I think the, the you will start to warm up to to using a Mac and it's not like I said it's not perfect and you know I'm like I said I'm, I'm considering journeying over and and quitting Vista myself and moving instead uh, pretty much all over to to the Mac as my primary operating system uh, I, I think it handles 64-bit applications in a far more elegant fashion than Windows has, and more importantly, 128-bit is coming around the corner. And I've been I've been watching the mess at which Microsoft has made the 64-bit transition, uh, and and I'm fearing what would happen if they try to go to 128 if they couldn't even get 64 right. There's so much legacy that they have to deal with. Um, it just makes me much more confident in moving platforms that the platform is really built with all this stuff inherent. So without reinstalling a different version of OS 10. I can fully access if I had four gigabytes of RAM installed in this machine. I could access and make full use of of those of that four gigabytes of RAM with 64-bit applications. Uh, so it's a uh it's 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 worth trying. It's worth playing around with. You know, you you get drawn in. Um, you know, Ponzi kind of makes fun of me now. She said, "Well, I was a diehard Windows user." She had her MacBook that Dave Weiner bought her, and apparently Dave bought it because she, he knew that I'd start playing with it more, and then eventually come over to the dark side, <laughs> and and switch to the Mac. And uh, I gotta admit, um, it's a very very compelling idea. Uh, not you know. 
fully sold on it yet, but I'm certainly working towards it, and I'm sure everybody uh, is going to be following that experience with me as I possibly journey uh, from uh, the traditional world of the PC over to the Mac world and everything that it entails. So stick with me. Uh, you know, I like to believe that I'm, I'm about as cross-platform as one can get. I'm platform agnostic. I just care about really cool stuff and really good stuff for the user. Um, by and large. So I don't know. What does everybody else think? Do you think there's a learning curve? Do you think Ponzi says the learning curve on the Mac or even for the iPhone was in there? Look at the photo frame. I didn't plan that. The photo frame had uh, some. You, one of you guys emailed that picture to my frame. It was an iPhone advertisement. She said the learning curve is non-existent, and she that's why she likes it. Uh, and she says that Windows is just inherently more difficult for her to use. And, you know, for, as far as computing goes, it shouldn't be a pain. Uh, I'm not saying that Apple is perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, I, uh, I'm, I'm warming up to the idea. It's, it's taken me a while. The fact that I can have both Windows and Mac running at the same time, uh, I, I'm much more compelled to possibly make that leap. So, again, what do you think? Learning curve? Is it a myth? Uh, are people just saying that is just a marketing ploy? What do you think? about the learning curve of Mac versus PC. Uh, there may even be some users, uh, and I know they're out there, who have switched from a Mac to a PC for a lot of different reasons. Um, I don't know. What do you think? I'm interested in, in hearing what you have to say. And of course, we get this uh, all the time in the chat room, and people are popping up the URL live.perillo.com, which of course is run by wildride.org, which I saw that URL pop up in there. Um, you know, the nice thing about chat is the questions as they come up, if we're not able to answer them right away, and that's not always the case, I can't always pay attention to the chat room. Either people in the chat room can answer your questions if you can't submit them to me by email or through YouTube. Um, then we'll be able to hopefully capture some of them and then answer them in future episodes. Try to do five different sh shows or segments a day. And, uh, you know, with any luck, uh, within a year's time, we'll have a thousand videos on YouTube, all genuine and all with the help of you. So anyway, we'll hopefully see you soon.